What is identity matrix? Identity matrix must be n by n, meaning it's a square matrix. It must have the same number of rows and columns. And the very first one, the first entry, first row, first column must be one, and diagonally it becomes one, and the rest of it is zero. That's identity matrix. So what is the identity matrix for order of three by three? So you start your very first one, 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 and the rest of the entries are what? Zero. That is identity matrix three by three. Okay. So why do we need the identity matrix? When you find the inverse of a square matrix, and if you multiply A and B, if they're inverse of each other, and B times A, remember A times C might be different than B times A, but if they both become I, identity matrix, then they are inverse of each other. That's how you can check if those two matrices are inverse of each other. So let's go ahead and determine whether A and B are inverse of each other. What do we need to do? We need to check A times B and B times A, and if it becomes identity matrix, then they're inverse of each other. That's how you prove it, yeah? So let's try A times B first. So A times B is negative 3, negative 7, 2, 5, times negative 5, negative 7, 2, and 3. So what do you do? I mean, since it's a square matrix, 2 by 2, it's 2 by 2, and 2 by 2, since these two numbers are the same, you can multiply them, and your product will be, again, 2 by 2. Right? So what do you do? You first look at the first row with the first column and you multiply these two together and add it. So it is negative 5 times negative 3, 15, plus 2, the second one, with the second one in the first row, 2 times negative 7, negative 14. That goes to the first row, first column. Second row, first column, you multiply these four together and add it. Negative 5 times 2, negative 10, plus 2 times 5, 10. Now, second column. So now you go with second column with first row. Negative 7 times negative 3 is 21. 3 times negative... 7 is negative 21. Now you multiply these two with these two, like dot product, and add them. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. And 5 times 3 is 15. You add. So then what do you get? 15 minus 14 is 1. Negative 10 plus 10 is 0. 21 minus 21 is 0. Negative 14 plus 15 is 1. Is this identity matrix? Yes. So then, can we conclude those two were inverse of each other? No. Because you have to check B times A first. I mean, B times A too. If this was no, it was an identity, then you can stop there and say they are not inverse of each other. But if you want to say yes, you have to do the next step. So now it's B times A. So B times A. B is negative 5, negative 7, 2, 3. Negative 3, negative 7, 2, 5. So again... Multiply these two with this, right? Use your hand. 
use your hand and go like that. That's what I do. So negative 3 times negative 5 is 15 plus 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Now with these 2, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 2 times 3 is 6. So you see it became 1 and 0. So there is a big chance to have an identity matrix again. So now here, negative 7 and the first top row, negative 7 times negative 5 is 35. 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. 5 times 3 is 15. So I get 1, 0, 0, 1. So is this identity matrix? Yes. So then what can you conclude? Yes. A and matrix A and B are what? Inverse of each other. Why? Because A times B and B times A was an identity matrix. Right. Please include the conclusion. If it says, is, are they inverse of each other? Explain why or why not. You have to show all the work if it's yes. And that's what you will say because AB was equal to BA, which became identity matrix.